Welcome to this community series video produced by Inner West Library. Before anything else, I want to acknowledge the Gadigal and Wangal people of the Eora Nation on whose land this series is produced, and to show my respect to their elders past, present and emerging, and to all First Australians with us today. Most of the very famous artists written about in our art collection have used sketchbooks, whether to plan their works as Leonardo da Vinci in his numerous studies for painting and inventions, or to capture moments as Turner in his channel sketchbook. In this series of a few sessions, local artists will open their sketchbooks to us. Thank you very much for their generosity and I hope that you will enjoy flipping through the pages with them. I'm Nicole, I'm, I'm an artist and um, I work with colour and found textiles. Um, I work with the idea of found colour as well. Um, I don't paint my own, um, I don't mix my own colours um, as a painter does, but I, I find colour and then I work with colour. So um, I'm going, today I'm going to have a look at a group of works that I do and, um, and some of the sketches, um, the sketches that I do for those works, leading up to those works. Um, I draw occasionally and also I, um, I do these diagrammatic sort of drawings that, that, um, that give me information about the, the pieces of work that I'm, I'm going to be working on and developing. So I'm just going to show um, a few of my sketches that are really like little diagrams for thinking about um, working with fabric and working with colour. And as I said before, I work with found colour rather than created colour and I work with found textiles. And I think about putting one system, my system, over another system, the system that's already on the found, on the textile. So I, I tend to work with, um, with pattern, as you can see in this. This is just a, an example, not a direct one that works with one of these. But this is just an example to show you how I, I start to think of, um, of pattern and how I think of pattern um, overlaying on another pattern or system. So um, these little sketches, and they're by no means complete sketches, and they're often not how something ends up looking. So because I work very much with process and fabric and process and material, a lot of the problems that um, would be resolved with, say, a sketch is actually resolved on the material itself and with the colour itself. So that's to give you one example. Um, I move on, and this is another one you can see they're not they're not very indelible looking drawings. They're quite light, just with graphite. And, um, and I start to work out how something like this work here, for example, which is, is I have overlaid colour on a found, already textured check cloth. Um, some of it you can see it has the actual colour of the cloth. This is the original colour and then I lay my pattern of colour or my system of colour over the top. When I start to work out these, um, these drawings, I write things on the top like new system over existing system, histories, it's to do with histories, record of a past. So I start to think of, of what the meaning of the work is and then I start to work out the diagrams which, which work with the pattern of the, of the textile and then the colours, how I'm going to work over the top of them. And I work out how they're going to work so that they're not recurring at the same, on the same, the colours next to each other. So you're getting a different range of the colour and it's often a limited colour and, um, and how it's actually going to work out. A bit like you would a weaving. So um, where I'm working with a woven fabric, I'm weaving colour on the top of it. And it's colour that is transparent and it's colour that shows the weaving underneath of what is already there. 
This is again a, a similar drawing for um, one of these works. Um, and you can see um, I work the, the small checks and um, the tiny pieces of colour. Um, like you can see this, this one over here. Um, this work um, the, is, has only one colour overlaid on the actual found fabric and that one colour is yellow, a transparent yellow. So I work all around with the with the grids and the colours of how they're going to how they're going to work and how they're going to weave over the top of what is already there, um, and that that's that's then worked out with colour. I do quite a lot of colour swatches and colour tests, but um, they're not here at the moment. Sometimes sometimes they are, but I mean I think you know probably here you can start to see how I'm just thinking about colour and thinking about transparent colour. But then I do, um, I do actual tests on, on pieces of fabric, um, on the fabric itself to see. So I know exactly what sort of measurement of, um, what sort of ingredient of paint, like how much, how much transparency to use within my paint so that it doesn't completely cover over what is underneath. So you can see that that when I, I scrape a, a transparent yellow over something, it can, you can see through to the woven fabric underneath. Um, if that got any thicker, it would become possibly opaque. And um, the, the colours that I use can only be transparent. So this is another continuation of it, um, of these works. And this, is, this series is to do with this series on the end here. Um, and how, again, how the colours um, lap up against each other or, or sort of meet each other so that they, they work with the colours that's already there in the woven fabric, but then they also work with the pattern that I'm putting over that pattern. Um, and those, those works are called, um, these are called sawtooth works because they have this diagonal in them. And also, um, which you can see how I started to work out how that pattern worked. Um, so down here it gets quite a lot more um, thorough in the way the colours worked out and the, the way the, the, the different colours, the two colours, like the blue-yellow, the yellow-yellow, the, the yellow-blue, the, you know, and so on, how they repeat and how they work so that they're not doubled up or, or something like that, so that you get this second system operating. And that's, that's what I'm interested in. It's a, it's a double system and it's to do with history. It's the history of the fabric and the history of the weaving and it's also to do with the history of what I'm putting on it and, and my addition to it. Um, and then this was the, the, the last one or one of the last ones I did for these, these works. Uh, it was a series of, of four works, four different Czech works. And... Um, you know, it, it, again, it's the found, the found colour, the found textile, the quite a complex check. And these these fabrics are actually Indian um, woven Indian throw throw rugs. But they, I was attracted to them because they had this this beautiful woven pattern that wove different amounts of colour together, and and you got this variation of mixed colours. And I knew that when I put a transparent colour on the top of it. I would get a complex, a, a complex colour system, and that's that's what I've I've got. So, you can see with these these small works, um, just tiny little drawings again, but enough for me with the writing of you know the turquoise, orange, and green paint on white background, orange, yellow, turquoise, blue paint over purple, yellow, blue, red, turquoise, yellow, green paint on neutral background yellow paint over green and red and magenta. So, so they were the, and they're all different sizes. And then um, I actually stretched them um, very carefully so that the, 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 the pattern of the work, um, um, you know, isn't cut off in any way and becomes part of the whole composition um, with the colors wrapping around the sides. Um, so that, that you can see the sketches are very, very light um, pencil sketches. Um, they're not. They wouldn't be part of um, exhibiting the work. You know, they may appear in a um, 
you know, under glass or something like that, you could see them and then you could could have a, have information about the kind of works I do. Um, but they're very much in tandem with the final work. They're not a they're not works. They're not drawings that really sit on their own at this stage. Um, I hope that makes some sense. Um, really, the work has to be seen um, and looked at very carefully so that you can start to piece the puzzle together. Hello, I'm Gail and I'm going to tell you a little bit about my sketchbooks. Here's a small selection of them. I've been learning and practicing watercolour for maybe 30 years, sometimes with different teachers and also in a little group called the Lilyfield Watercolour Group. I do take a sketchbook when I go travelling or when I go out into the countryside or when I go on picnics or holidays. I find it's a great way to remember holidays. I find that little sketchbooks are just as good as having a camera with me. Oh. Uh, when I went through my sketchbooks, I found that the, the first one where I started regularly was on a holiday when I went to Sweden and Norway in 2002. And um, that was when I started my uh, career of sketchbooks. And this is, this is the little book uh, where I started, July 2002. And I went to an island in the uh, west of Sweden to stay with some friends. Sometimes I just do a little ink sketch like that with, a, with an inky pen. Generally don't use pencil, I usually use an ink pen. Uh, sometimes I write, just to remind me. And this is on the island on the west coast, uh, very rocky, beautiful landscape. And it was just perfect for drawing. In the beginning, I used to draw the scene with either pencil or my ink pen and then paint it. See, that's where I draw it in ink pen and then I more or less coloured it in. But after a while I got more confident and I started just painting without the pen. I'll just find one for you. Now this was when we went on a ferry up the fjords in Norway. I just go straight in with the paint and get a, just get an impression of, and I was painting from the ferry so we were moving the whole time. So these little paintings had to be very quick this is the Norway coast, again in July 2002, and just an impression of the coastline and the skies and the sea, mostly all in the same colours. The, the trip that we took was about 11 days up the coast of Norway and back again, so a lot of opportunities for, for painting. Uh, this is a little sketch of a, um, a woman sitting in the panorama lounge on the boat. Little cottages, in one of the villages that we passed through. And there was so much to paint that on that trip, I think I filled, completely filled two of these little, two of these little sketchbooks. And they make really wonderful memories. Another book that I've got, this was in 2012, September 2012, when we went to Cornwall. And this is um, on a walk up the coastline in, in Cornwall. Again, um, at this stage, I don't often draw in ink at all. I just paint straight away and get an impression of the scenery. And I always put a date on it so that I, it helps me to remember when and where it was. That was in September 2012. These little impressions only, only take a few minutes to do. Uh, there's not very much detail in them and, and uh, in that one I've only used about, well maybe one or two colours I think. Just a bit of water and a bit of paper and a couple of different blues and that's it. Then of course I often do sketches close to home on walks around the harbour and this is Elkington Park in, in Balmain near where I live in May 2013. And that's just an impression of the park and some trees. And uh, that one's not very good, but I'll show it anyway. It's a couple of people who were having a picnic 
right next door to us. You don't have to be good to do these sketches. Um, nobody else really has to see them. You can just you just it can just be for fun and for pleasure, and uh, and you do improve. Definitely, you do improve with practice and over time. That's another style that I sometimes use. That's drawing with an ink pen, uh, a view from Katoomba in August 2015, just a few years ago. That's another one, Gubbett's Leap. So I don't take my sketchbooks everywhere I go, but I do take them um, when we go out for a picnic and I'm planning to uh, sit and do some drawing. That was at Nielsen Park when, in that same summer, February 2015. That's a double, a double page of a very... I, I decided to try and really get the character of that tree and draw it from top to bottom. And to do that, I needed two pages because it was a very tall tree. That was in Noosa on a, on a little bush walk along the, along the coast. I just thought I'd show you my little pack because everything that I need is in a little pack that size. I've got a pencil, a tissue, some, some uh, brushes and a little piece of, a little sponge and a rubber and um, a credit card for making marks and just about everything. I take a little bottle of water and a couple of tissues and it all fits into that. So it's very easy to take your book and your little sketch pack and that's absolutely everything that you need to get started. And um, I would encourage anyone to get started because it's a lot of fun and you do improve as you practice, you get more confidence.